Hey everyone, welcome back to Pop Out Workshop. In today's video, I want to take a very common item, these little plugs right here that you use for your pocket holes and be able to show you two different, very easy methods to be able to make them and save a lot of money. At the big box store, it's going to cost you about $8.98 for $50. That works out to about $0.18 cents a piece. Now this first jig is nothing more than a 2x4. And I have the one slot here. I'm going to show you how I cut that. And the same thing for this. This will give you the size that you need. Basically, this is an inch and three quarters uh, hole that we have drilled in here. So very simple to do. Let me show you how I made this one. Now this is very simple to do. I'm taking the Craig Tool jig, clamping it to the 2x4, and then taking the step drill bit and just drilling the hole. Basically, all I'm doing is creating a pocket hole. The most important part of this is that when you're drilling this hole, you want to go deeper than normally you would go drilling a pocket hole. You want to actually have that drill bit come out the bottom of that 2x4, leaving that small hole. This little hole is critical. You need that hole to be able to push out the plug after you cut it to the proper size. Without that hole, it's going to be stuck in there. The next step is to be able to drill that depth gauge. We want to be able to drill this down about an inch and three quarters of an inch. The easiest way to be able to do that is clamp two of the two by fours together and then drill right on that seam. That way you're drilling half the hole into the 2x4 that you want for the jig and the other half is just a, a spacer if you will. I'm using a 3 8 drill bit with the stop collar on it and I can set that to any depth that I want. For my purpose we're setting this at 1 and 3 quarters of an inch. You don't need the step drill for this. You want to have a good solid pocket that you can slide the dowel rod into to be able to cut out the proper length. Drilling the hole is actually the easy part. I know my camera angle was a little bit off, but all I did is just drill that hole right between the two pieces of the 2x4. And that's it. Separate the 2x4 and you have a completed jig. That slot is the easiest way to be able to drill it. And now you have a depth gauge to be able to cut the plug to the proper length. To verify that, yes, perfect inch and three quarters. At this point, the jig is finished. I'm going to grab the dowel rod, slide it into the pocket hole, and take it over to the bandsaw. At the bandsaw itself, I have the fence set up for the width of the 2x4, and now all I need to do is cut the dowel rod. Since the dowel rod is in the pocket hole, that's going to create the perfect plug that I'm looking for. Can't get much easier than this. Now that hole that we had earlier, I'll just use a small tool and push the plug out and there's the first plug. Now on the dowel rod I already have the angle cut. All I need to do is use the depth gauge and I can cut the next plug. So we'll slide that in, drop in the dowel rod and cut off my second plug to the proper length. So now I've got two very easy plugs made with this very simple jig. So you can actually create quite a few plugs fairly quickly with this small jig. Now the other thing I would suggest is cutting that two before in half. You don't need to have it that long. Now this jig is a little bit more complicated, but yet is very simple to be able to use. Now this plywood is actually five millimeter plywood. And the reason being is when this dowel rod's in there, I still wanted to be able to have control and to be able to move it and slide it. Now, as far as this angle, it really didn't matter. And then when I made this jig, I didn't even measure it. But this actually slides in right to that point when it gets cut. So if I take the dial rod itself and slide it in here, you would slide it right to that point right there. And then you're able to cut it with the miter saw. This angle was actually established based on the actual piece itself. But for those who want to know, it works out that this is about a 15 degree angle. So this allows me to be able to cut this at that angle 
giving you that type of a cut right there and then slipping it in over here and you have two different measurements. This one's an inch and a half. This is an inch and a quarter. So you can slide it right there to that point and then cut it and this is what you get. And you can just keep cutting and just let them slide down here. You don't need to stop. So this is a much faster jig to be able to cut these little plugs and that will save you a lot of money. Now, based on the price that I paid for this dial rod, these actually cost about nine cents a piece. But actually, if I shopped around and was able to find a less expensive dial rod, I would even pay less for each of these little plugs. The back that I have on here is just so that I can clamp it to the Midas saw. It really doesn't serve any purpose at all as far as the operation of the jig itself. It's only there so that I can clamp it to the Midas saw and I won't have any movement. And that will keep this jig stationary. I know some of you are gonna wanna see this actual angle and not just take my word for it. So if I take the protractor and line it up right there, let's get it right on the marks. There we go. You can see that that's about a 15 degree angle off of the 90. To make this jig, I started out with just a scrap piece of the five millimeter uh, plywood and I cut some thin strips. Now this is roughly about five eighths of an inch uh, width. I didn't even measure it. It just seemed to be a good width. So that's what I use. So anything around a half inch to maybe five eighths of an inch would do just fine. I cut three strips. I think that will be plenty of material to be able to make this jig. And by the way, I know somebody's going to make the comment. I did remove the dust collection so that you could see this operation just a little bit easier. Normally I have the dust collection attached to be able to keep the dust down. But it's also very hard for you guys to see. For the base, I'm using a half inch piece of plywood. As far as the length of this plywood, basically it's the length of the Midas saw itself. Now the idea behind this is I want to be able to glue these two strips down and still have the dowel rod easily slide from left to right. And that will give me the control that I need to be able to hold it. I'm marking this with a pencil and then I'm just going to glue these two strips in place. I'm not using any nails at all. So I'm using a combination of the Starbond medium glue and I'm just putting several dots of the glue onto the board. And then in between that, I'll use the white glue. And that way I'll be able to place the uh, plywood down exactly where I need it. It'll hold it in place until the white glue dries and it'll make it where I can have a functional jig in just a matter of minutes. As I always say, you don't want to overcomplicate it, and this is a very easy way to be able to do it. Just add a little bit of the accelerator, and I'm ready to stick this little piece of plywood right down onto the base. I use the dowel rod as a spacer, plus I have the pencil line that I marked earlier. And with those two methods to be able to make sure I have the proper alignment, I can just press this plywood in place, and it's done. Now, I told you earlier that this actually was a 15 degree angle, but this is actually how I measured it. I put the plug down exactly where I wanted it, and then I set the bevel square to the uh, correct angle of that plug, and then transferred and drew my line onto the base. To me, this actually worked out real well because it would be very hard with a protractor to measure the angle of that little plug. The next step, of course, is to be able to cut these two little strips to be able to have them at the proper length and at the proper angle. So by lining it up on the pencil line, I just simply marked the top edge of it. That gave me the angle. Of course, I could have done the same thing with the bevel gauge, just basic geometry. That would give me the exact angle as well. So took it over, cut it on the table saw, brought it back over, lined it up with my pencil line that's on the base, and I'll mark the actual length of it. No tape measure required for that. I repeated the same exact process and cut my second piece of the uh, five millimeter plywood. And now it's time to glue these two to the base. 
So it's back to the CA glue by Starbond. And just put a little dot on each end of these pieces, followed by some white glue right in the center of it. And that's going to give me the instant bond that I need. And then long term, I'll have the white glue that'll be able to hold it in place for years to come, quite frankly. Because I plan on using this jig quite a bit in the next few years. I'm tired of buying these little plugs at the big box store. I would much rather make my own. Now for this first piece, I just followed my guideline that I put. But now when I add the second piece in here, this is where I want to be able to use the dowel rod to help give the alignment. I want that dowel rod to be able to act as a spacer. And as a backup, I use that pencil line and that gives me the two reference. Back to the CA glue, a dot of the glue at each end. That's really all that's necessary. And a little bit of the white glue. Now from there, let's just get a little bit of the accelerator. We'll spray that on and then we'll put it in place. Let me grab the dowel rod and I'll put this down right on my pencil line and the dowel rod will act as a spacer to make sure that it slides the way that I want it. Again, a very easy process. At this point, the jig is completed. I can put the dowel rod in and slide it down along this slot. And at the same time, I can easily slide it into this to get it where I can cut this angle. But I do need to take it one step further and we need to add the backboard to it. As I had said earlier, the only reason for this little backboard is to be able to allow me to clamp this jig to the miter saw. If it wasn't for that, wouldn't need it at all. Again, in keeping with no nails, I'm taking a CA glue and putting several dots of the glue along this uh, plywood base. And then I'm just going to fill it in with the white glue as I have done before and press this in place. Nothing fancy, nothing complicated. And again, I did not want to use nails on this jig at all. And the combination of using the Starbond CA glue along with the white glue that should provide plenty of strength to be able to hold this jig together without the use of any nails. Let's take this completed jig over to the miter saw and test it out and see how it works. Now I use just a simple clamp to be able to hold this in place. Then I can slide the dowel rod right into that slot, line it up where I want it, and do keep your fingers out of the way. You have enough room to be able to keep your fingers safely away from the blade to be able to make this small cut. That gives you the correct angle for the piece and then slide it into the other slot and I can slide it right down to my pencil line that acts as my gauge and then I can make the other cut and that creates the perfect plug again. But the nice thing about this with this one setup I can make these plugs very very quickly just by sliding it down to my gauge making the cut and I can just keep repeating this process over and over to cut the number of plugs that I need for the project. Well, now you have two different jigs that you can choose from that you can make in your shop very easily. Now, I hope this video has been very helpful to you. And if it is, by all means, please consider subscribing to the channel. And don't forget, give me a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below and tell me what you think of these jigs and what type of process that you use to be able to make the plugs, or do you just buy them? Let me know. I would love to be able to hear from you. So for now, I look forward to seeing each and every one of you in the future videos. So for now, bye-bye. Can't wait to see you again real soon.